Hello there, friend. <laughs> Are you surprised? I've come back. <laughs> yes. It's me, Winter. It seems as though you've missed me. Yes, I've missed you as well. The other parts of the world simply aren't the same without my cold, loving human friend. <laughs> Autumn? Yes, she will be around for a bit longer, but I will convince her to move on soon enough. Have you had a lovely time with her? She hasn't worn you out, has she? <laughs> Wonderful, I see. Come here, let me embrace you once more. Most humans would curse me to the sky, you know, bringing them nothing but these frigid temperatures, making them shove snow out of their way, making them bundle up, difficult to travel. But you, you so willingly embrace me. Yes, you, my precious friend. You've never minded the change I bring to your corner of the earth. I've always been amazed at your adaptability and surprised by your love for the gifts I bring. Yes, it's like you don't mind any of it. I love you. I am perhaps a bit late this year. Yes, you know how it is. Mother is still not well. My transition from other parts of the world has been delayed due to her illness. My path has been significantly mixed up. But do not fear. I am here now, and I have brought all the frigid coldness you could ever desire. What was that? Oh, my dear friend, do not worry about me. I may not have come this year with the usual heavy snowfall. This flurry is very much simply to reserve the energy for later. I'm preparing something very special for you. Now come, let us walk and talk, shall we? Did you come here waiting for me? For one such as yourself, a human who lives most comfortably in the warmer months. To come out here into this park on the longest frozen night of the season. Are you in love with me or something? <laughs> How have you been? Hmm. You look worn. Here, look at me. My dear, your light, your human spark. Why is it so dim? What has happened to you? What have they, what have they done? No, no, really. What has caused you to look so down like this? Tell me. My friend. Oh, my dear friend, do, do not talk about yourself in such a manner. You say all these things, worthless, stupid, weak, as though you were describing a piece of trash cast away into a pit to rot, not the shining gem that you are. Come with me. Now, stand here. Hold up your hand. There. Now. Look at the snowflake stuck to your glove. Look very closely. Look at each one. Some are small, some are big, some have sharp edges and some have round. Each one is different. Behold the beauty of each tiny shard of ice. Each of them works of art, wouldn't you say? Yes, you are a work of art as well, just like one of these. Now, look all around you. Look at the landscape. Look at the snowflakes. Together, they create an even more beautiful scene. Each one, falling as they will, laying on the ground, paint an immaculate work to admire. Let me tell you, my dear friend, you are more beautiful than one of these snowflakes. More beautiful than the entire brilliant scene they create all together. Your spirit like a flame, glows with a light all its own. What's that? No, I won't be offended. 
What is it you want to say? The snow is beautiful, but soon melts away. Indeed. And why, tell me, would you call that the end? It is far from the end. That is the snowflake's entire purpose. To melt, to nourish the earth with water. Each one of these flakes provides water for the ground. It will sink into the dry earth, soak into the grass and trees, evaporate back into the sky, and fall once more. A snowflake, my friend, is just as valuable as a raindrop. So do not tell me that you are not worthy. Your part in this world is precious. Precious to me. Precious to your friends and family. Precious to the earth itself. Oh, my dear friend, do not listen to those voices in your head. Empty and shallow. You know how this winter forest seems empty but feels full? It's like that. Look deeper. Listen. There is life hidden beyond your senses. There are things happening for you that you cannot perceive until you reach them. Much like I know this forest is full of living things. The trees? They aren't dead. They're alive and well, deep underground. This is their season of rest, as well as it is for the hibernating animals. My snow blankets them until it is their time to wake up again. Could it be that you also need a season of rest? You've come to a period in your life that feels and looks dead, but in reality it is not. You must look deeper. Here, do something for me. Do not, under any circumstances ever, or even in the few moments after I give you this command, think about a pink polar bear. Got it? What did you just think about? Hmm, you've already done it, haven't you, you disobedient human? (laughs) That is my entire point, though. It's far easier to actively think about something than to not think about it. So, let us think about true and beautiful things. I'll go first. On my way here, I saw so many baby whales. Well, not that they were newborns, of course but they made this entire year safely. They were on their way down south with their mothers. There's more than last year. So that was a pleasant observation. I really wish I wasn't the reason they moved from one end of the planet to the other, but, well, that does remind me of another thing. Let me tell you about a bird. It's called the bar-tailed godwit. It flies from eight to 11 days, straight from Alaska to New Zealand. Amazing, right? all to get away from the cold I bring. (laughs) I don't blame the little thing, though. Eh? The godwit. Oh, it's a little beach bird, like a sandpiper. It's got a nice long beak for catching little things in the sand. (laughs) They're really cute. Say, do you have a favorite bird? (laughs) I see, yes, there are so many. I have a hard time choosing as well. There are some I think are so beautiful but, as you know, they tend to fly off when I head in their direction. My favorite. (laughs) Well, would you like to take a guess? (laughs) Go on. No, not a snowy owl, but that was a good guess. They're up there in my list. Not a snow goose, either. A swan. Huh. Yes, I do like swans, but they aren't my favorite. They tend to be a bit temperamental. (laughs) Uh, You give up. I'll tell you. The little snow buntings are the ones I find the most adorable. If there were any that lived in your area, I'd summon them. But since I can't, I'll call my next favorite. (laughs) Ah. Yes, the chickadees. Aren't they so fascinating? Look at those little beady eyes. Oh, that one's landed on you. It must know who you are. Who? What? (laughs) My friend. You're my friend. 
As a friend of mine, all of my friends wish to be friends with you as well. No, oh, there's another. Have you ever wondered how these tiny little creatures survive in the cold? Well, yes, of course, I take care of them. But they are very much capable of it all on their own. They are experts at conserving energy, which comes only from their food intake. See how they look so poofy and round? That's because they fluff their feathers out to keep the heat in better. Kind of like that thick coat you've got on. They actually keep their feet a little colder than the rest of their body. <laughs> it's amazing how they keep the balance. So delicate. So small. And yet, they're so spunky in this weather. <laughs> kind of like you. <laughs> Was that a blush I see? Oh, just red from the cold? Mm, I'm sure. <laughs> My precious chickadee. <laughs> what if I call you that? Would that be weird? <laughs> You'd like it. All right then, it's settled, my little chickadee. <laughs> Let's keep walking. It's gotten quite dark, and you've got to go back home. Oh, speaking of which, it should be about time for... Ah, there. Look up. The clouds are breaking. The moon might not be full tonight, but the stars are shining brighter than ever. Can you see them now? Here. Let me just... There. You can see Orion now. I know that one's your favorite. As every season changes here on this earth, the stars still remain the same. It's reassuring and peaceful, isn't it? You're going to be just fine, my little winter bird. You are strong and resilient, just like our feathered friends. You'll make it through this. I've definitely seen you at better times of your life, but no matter what dark night you're walking through right now, the dawn will come soon enough, and it will be brighter than ever. <laughs>